Former WWE employee Janelle Grant files a petition for records against a wellness doctor said to reportedly treat WWE talent and employees in the latest twist in the Vince McMahon lawsuit. We have the ratings for Saturday's edition of AEW Collision on TNT. Could AEW be set to run a stadium show in the state of Texas next year? Reportedly, there are plans possibly to do just that. Rhea Ripley reportedly has not been cleared to compete inside a WWE ring yet. However, the expectation is she will be cleared by SummerSlam to compete for the Women's World Championship. The date for AEW Grand Slam has been revealed and an update on the schedule for this week's edition of SmackDown. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off with the latest developments when it comes to Vince McMahon and the Janelle Grant lawsuit. According to a story from Brandon Thurston and John Pollock of WrestleNomics, lawyers for Janelle Grant filed a pre-action discovery petition today against Dr. Carlin Coker and his clinic, Peak Wellness Incorporated. Now, Grant, who is a former WWE employee, says that beginning around November 2019, she was sent at the direction of Vince McMahon to Colker's Clinic in Greenwich, Connecticut, where she received treatments that weren't disclosed to her, including pills and IV infusions. Grant says when she asked Colker about the substance of the pills she was being given, Colker allegedly pushed back and questioned whether Grant trusted him. Grant's attorneys wrote, quote, On multiple visits, Dr. Colker prescribed Miss Grant with adrenal trays or adrenal supplement trays provided by his office and instructed her to take the unmarked pills daily. Dr. Colker did not explain the substances, dosages or purpose of the pills to Miss Grant beyond purportedly addressing her symptoms of fatigue. When Miss Grant asked Dr. Colker about the substance of the supplement trays and specifically which substances caused her to experience nausea, he responded with pushback about trust, including, quote, if you don't trust me, we have bigger problems, end quote. Now, according to Grant's petition, Colker, quote, routinely treats employees and talent of World Wrestling Entertainment, end quote. Grant is seeking medical records related to the sex trafficking lawsuit she filed earlier this year against Vince McMahon, WWE and John Laurinaitis. The paper records the clinic has provided up to this point are incomplete and inaccurate, Grant's attorney say. Quote, for example, the petition states, quote, there are billing records that do not have a corresponding medical record medical records that do not have a corresponding billing record, inconsistent billing rates, and double charges, end quote. Grant alleges that a peak wellness employee was involved in several instances of sexual abuse against Miss Grant by McMahon, as further described in Miss Grant's federal complaint, end quote. The federal complaint filed in January described, among other allegations of sexual abuse, that McMahon recruited a physical therapist whose identity is obscured as physical therapist from an unnamed clinic referred to only as alternative clinic to participate in threesomes involving McMahon and Grant. Grant said McMahon pressured her into these and other sexual acts. Grant's federal complaint also alleged that she was sex trafficked under the control of McMahon. She says she was sexually abused by McMahon and Laurinaitis and that WWE was supportive of McMahon's relationship with her. In the January complaint, Grant alleged that McMahon urged her to see a physician who is anonymized in the complaint as, quote, celebrity doctor, end quote, who was said to operate out of the anonymized alternative clinic. Thurston and Pollock state they could not confirm if the individual referred to as celebrity doctor in the Grant complaint is in fact Colker, and if the facility referred to as alternative clinic is in fact peak wellness. Grant alleged in January, quote, after the initial visit, it became apparent to Miss Grant that McMahon and Celebrity Doctor wanted Miss Grant to remain in the care of the Celebrity Doctor's practice, and Miss Grant felt pressured to do so, end quote. The parties in the federal case agreed in May to put the lawsuit on hold pending a federal investigation. A spokesperson for McMahon took issue with Grant taking legal action on Colker while the federal lawsuit is on hold. Quotes, Miss Grant's petition for pre-action discovery against 
against Dr. Kolker is a direct violation of the court-ordered stay, and nothing more than an attempt to generate publicity on her false allegations and to harass people connected to Mr. McMahon, who is being sued by Ms. Grant in a separate matter, a spokesperson for McMahon said Tuesday afternoon in response to a request for comment on this report. Quote, the facts are that Ms. Grant told Ms. McMahon she was fatigued and asked him to recommend a doctor, the spokesperson said. Ms. Grant called Dr. Kolker and became a patient of his. Her statement in the filing is inconsistent with her prior remarks. Ms. Grant never had anything but good things to say about the doctor when speaking to Ms. McMahon and others about him, end quote. Now, the article says they sent a message requesting comments to email addresses believed to belong to Kolka and Peak Wellness, but have yet to receive a response. The new document filed today in Superior Court in Connecticut alleges Kolka knew about the non-disclosure agreement between Grant and McMahon, which is among the issues at the centre of the federal lawsuit. Quote, Dr. Kolka had personal knowledge of the circumstances surrounding a purported non-disclosure agreement at issue in the federal action, Grant's attorneys wrote in the new filing. Grant also says Kolka recommended Grant work with Kolka's attorney, who helped her negotiate the NDA with McMahon in early 2022. That claim is consistent with what Grant alleged in January about the unidentified celebrity doctor when Grant claimed that McMahon, quote, approved of Miss Grant asking celebrity doctor for an attorney referral, end quote. Kolka is a doctor who is popular with celebrities and professional athletes. Published news stories indicate that he's worked with the likes of Justin Bieber, Jeremy Piven, NBA center uh, Chris Stapps, Paul Zingis, and NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal. Kolka appeared in a 2007 reality show with O'Neal, Shaq's Big Challenge on ABC, that addressed the challenges with childhood obesity. The official website for Peak Wellness describes its facility as offering traditional medical care, along with advanced diagnostics, functional medicine, physical medicine, anti-aging, and aesthetics. The new legal action, naming Kolka, is filed in Connecticut Superior Court in Stamford, unlike Grant's federal lawsuit, which is in federal court in Connecticut. The Wall Street Journal reported in February that the Southern District of New York was investigating allegations of sex trafficking and sexual assault against McMahon. In its regulatory filings last summer, WWE disclosed that a subpoena and search warrant had been executed on McMahon. WWE Chief Content Officer Paul Triple H Levesque declined to comment on whether the company is still cooperating with the investigation when asked at the press conference following the company's Money in the Bank Premium Live event earlier this month. So what do you make of the latest developments when it comes to this? Do you expect any more developments? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Now, we have the ratings for Saturday's edition of AEW Collision. And of course, there was a lot going on on television on Saturday night. Saturday night's episode of AEW Collision averaged 362,000 viewers on TNT, which is up 18.3% from the previous week, of course, which went head to head with WWE Money in the Bank. Now, it's the second lowest audience total for the show since January 27, when Collision went up against WWE's Royal Rumble PLE. In the 18 to 49 demographic, Collision drew a 0.14 rating. That's up 7 75% from last week, but was only 24 for the day on cable due to the news coverage of the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. This was tied with the best rating Collision has done in the 1849 since May 25. As compared to the same week in 2023, Collision's overall viewership was down 37.5%, while its 18 to 49 rating was down 30%. That Collision episode last year featured the 2023 Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Final. So what do you make of these numbers? Was it expected considering the coverage that was obviously dominated by cable news involving the Trump incident on Saturday? Did you expect it to be worse, better? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Now, this is a really interesting story when it comes to a possible stadium show in Texas next year for All Elite Wrestling. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, AEW is planning another major show. Fightful Select's Sean Ross Sapp has learned more about All Elite Wrestling's agreement with the Dallas slash Arlington slash Fort Worth area and spoke to many in the know about details that led to Ring of Honor and AEW Collision effectively landing a residency there. As of now, that's not the only event headed to the area. Fightful say they spoke with numerous people with knowledge of the situation in the Dallas slash Arlington area that All Elite Wrestling is planning to bring a major scale event to the area in 2025. Numerous sources who had knowledge of the situation teased that it could be a stadium show and be on par with quote, AEW's biggest event. 
Now, Fightful have been told that officials in the area could make an announcement about the show by the end of the year if all goes well. Now, uh, Fightful say while they've reached out to some in AEW about the relationship with Dallas, none have confirmed that the event is happening, where, or a possible name. Now, should AEW run a show in the Dallas slash Arlington area, it would leave them with several options, including AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys, which hosted WrestleMania 32 and 38. It can fit over 100,000 people. Other potential stadiums include the Texas Rangers Global Life Field and FC Dallas's Toyota Stadium. So what are your thoughts on the possibility of AEW running a stadium show in Texas? Could they pull that off next year? Let me know your reaction to that too in the comment section below. Now, an update when it comes to the former Women's World Champion, Rhea Ripley. Now, on last night's Raw, the bitter feud between Women's World Champion Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley was confirmed to be culminating with a one-on-one -on -one title match at SummerSlam in Cleveland, Ohio. With fans desperate to see Ripley get her hands on Morgan, a new backstage report has seemingly spoiled any chance of that happening any time before the pair face off at the biggest party of the summer. PW Insider's Mike Johnson is reporting that WWE are purposely keeping Ripley away from any physical activity on WWE television, with this likely set to continue until SummerSlam. The reason for this is reportedly due to Ripley's injury status, with Johnson stating that Ripley is not yet 100% cleared to return to the ring, despite being announced for a major match at one of WWE's biggest events. WWE sources expect Ripley to be cleared by the time she faces Morgan in Cleveland, and until then, the company will continue to work around the Eradicator's injury on TV. Johnson continued by noting that the initial talk within WWE was for Ripley to return either at SummerSlam or the Monday Night Raw after the event. However, it was reportedly Ripley herself that voiced her confidence that she'd be fit enough to return at SummerSlam instead. So Ripley says she's going to be ready, and we'll have to wait and see indeed if that is the case. Now, going back to AEW, we finally got a date for AEW Grand Slam. AEW will continue its successful uh, run of successful events in the state of New York this September when the company hosts its fourth annual Grand Slam event at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Ticket information had recently leaked online, leading fans to believe that the event would be taking place on September 25 with a live episode of AEW Dynamite and a taped episode of AEW Collision. That has now been made official as AEW has confirmed the news. With the announcement that Dynamite and Collision will be taking place at Flushing Meadows, 2024 marks the first year that Rampage will not be taped at the venue, with information on that week's episode still to be announced. Arthur Ashe Stadium has been the site of some of AEW's biggest moments over the past three editions of Grand Slam. 2021 saw the legendary in-ring debut of Brian Danielson as he went bow to bow with Kenny Omega on Dynamite, while Rampage saw a surprise appearance of Homicide as he arrived to help John Moxley and Eddie Kingston defeat Suzuki Gun. The 2022 edition not only saw the debut of Soraya, but also three title changes on Dynamites with Chris Jericho winning the Ring of Honor World Championship, the acclaimed winning the AEW World Tag Team Championships, and John Moxley winning the vacant AEW World title. Japanese wrestling legend The Great Muta also made a cameo appearance on that year's Rampage to help Sting and Darby Allen. 2023 will of course will probably be remembered as a cursed show as both John Moxley and Adam Cole suffered severe injuries on a night that saw MGF choke out Samoa Joe on Dynamite and the Elite become Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Team Champions on Rampage. And finally, a bit of an update when it comes to this week's edition of SmackDown. Now, According to a report from PW Insider, there will be two episodes of SmackDown take this coming Friday, July 19, in Omaha, Nebraska. The taping is already set to feature an appearance by Logan Paul and has one match announced. Carmelo Hayes is set to be taken on Andrade on the SmackDown episode set to air live on Friday, July 19. The show for July 26 will be taped after the July 19 live show in the same venue due to WWE traveling to Japan that weekend. Starting Thursday, July 25, WWE will host three Super Show live events in Japan occurring through the weekend. With the first stop bringing WWE to Osaka, Japan on July 25, before moving on to Tokyo for shows on the 26th and 27th. The travels are seemingly not impacting the following episode of Raw, which is still listed to tape and air live on Monday, July 29, from St. Paul, Minnesota. But there you go, guys. Slate's pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.